Radio Shouty. Being on that station and then breaking records as a DJ and really being able to put your stamp on the town on how you felt when it came to mixing and blending and just really cranking it up. Well, I like how it sounds great hindsight, yeah. right? <laughs> I'm gonna just tell you at the time, it's, it's, it was kind of simple. The the city, you can't stop a movement really. You just can't. And so hip hop wasn't having its voice full out in the city. Um, because you couldn't do it by just doing it at nighttime or just yeah. on the weekend. So um, so the, so we were excited to be able to uh, hear the station. I, I'm at home. I don't have to be on. Yeah. I'm going to turn on the station, and we got a hip-hop station. You can drive down the street, drive, get on the highway. You can do anything and listen to this rap station as long as your antenna is working pretty decent. Thanks. Okay? Because the signal wasn't that great. We were on Old National Highway, by the way. Mm-hmm. First location was in the middle of a cow pasture. Second <laughs> station, <laughs> station, which I went to, uh, Old National Highway. Mm. So... Um, yeah, we had ants on the ceiling. And we were right above a dentist's office, <laughs> right across from um, Crow's Nest. My God. Yeah, across the street. Um, so, yeah, so once again, on the air, playing these records, they're bringing us songs on cassette. Yeah. Literally, the idea that Rico, Wade, or whomever would drive down to the station and bring, you know, the music director, a cassette of the new record, and they bring that cassette in to me, or a copy of it, yeah. and I'd play it, because I was doing Afternoon Drive against Greg Street uh, when I got on in 96. Yeah. And uh, so, you know, that's that part, and then there were the clubs. So Mike Cato, who owns Blue Flame, yeah. owned Club 559. Mm. He was our first client. My God. I, I understood, to my understanding, he was our first uh, client and definitely our most consistent one. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, you know, gave birth to 559. I mean, what you want me, you know, what you want to say? Like, well, see, now if she and all this before Kaya and all that, you know, what I, mean? I mean, Kaya coming and then Velvet and all them is three years. The AG movement, as people know it, I would say it was kind of three, four years Down after the, the Kaya thing, yeah. even though they were here. But the yeah. movement, as everybody knows, as far as their presence on the radio, probably came 99. It came after I left Hot. Five five nine nabs. I've mm-hmm. heard stories of that club, man. I mean, can you tell me what was it like to DJ in the hottest club in the city, right across from the AUC, and cranking that thing? Up? Let me say this, because that's why we gotta be careful. Some folks, their perception, especially of Atlanta, if we tell them it's the hottest club in the city, they gonna think, you know, something shiny. And no, this is. When you go somewhere, any oh, yeah. place you want to, you, if you want to go, if, why travel to a city and just go to the mall? Mm-hmm. You got to go to where it is. Five five nine was Atlanta. It, that's it. And what, what was up the street? Fox, not Fox Lady. Um, come on, Montres. Yeah. I'm old school. Yeah, it done changed name. The strip club. Basically. Yeah, pictures of Atlanta now. Right. Then the, the Taco Bell, West End Mall. Remember, am I right? Yeah, West yeah, End West Mall. End. Dunkin' Donuts. This this local. This Atlanta. Yeah. If you if you don't if you don't like if you don't live over here and if you ain't going to college you might not even know. Oh, I mean again there wasn't that many clubs. I'm saying you still had the again one twelves. You still had certain things, but five five nine was man. You, this is local. This is this is homegrown. That was right? it. Right. So so my challenge, the so called challenge when I went to five five nine because I went to five five nine to DJ as a radio personality. So peep that, right? I'm not the house DJ at five five nine. Now my stomping ground, I always say this. My stomping ground for five five nine existed was Club Excess. Uh-huh. I moved here. I absorbed. I not only absorbed Atlanta sound. Again, it wasn't but so much hip hop. No damn way. When I moved here, you had to play cameo <laughs> in the clubs and be and be proficient at it. <laughs> Proficient. And your records better not skip when you playing Word Up or your Ooh. ass is losing your job. That's it. Everybody follow? That's how simple your ass cannot have a club job in Atlanta. Ooh. Let your record skip on Word Up in Atlanta. This Atlanta. In a, now, 559 is here, too. Yeah. Okay. So, now, 559, what we doing in there? The migrations of, of the sounds you'd hear at Nicky's, too. 8-Ball and MJG. Yeah. UGK. Hard Boys, if you know. 1-5 Posse. So, and again, we're going bass, southern, rap, this, that, and the third, and the fourth. Um, I mean, Little John literally created who you with for mm. five, five, nine. The energy. So you're not going to play no East Coast records in there. So I went as a radio personality as a guest, and I guess they thought I was going to go, I don't know who they are, but my ch- personal challenge was, oh, no, I know what time it is. Exactly. I'm dropping Mr. Cool as soon as I get in this bitch. <laughs> And if you don't know who Mr. Koo is, then therefore we you can't ain't no have this threat. conversation. You ain't no more threat. You don't know about it. 
These records you got to know. Whew. This is 559. 